everyone. Welcome to the Microsoft Teams Ignite uh, 2021 Spring Recap Spotlight webinar. And uh, this is all about what was being announced or launched at Ignite uh, last week related to Teams. And I have also included some other subjects like a, a top or a news that were released perhaps a few weeks before the Ignite, but overall it's all brand new what's happening with Teams. And yes, there will be demos. This is not a big slideshow, so you won't be suffering that uh, uh, situation when there's a wall of power, uh, PowerPoint just uh, flooding you all over. So uh, welcome everyone. I hope you are enjoying this about 90 minutes. Uh, I'm very known for not uh, being stick to, uh, sticking to the time. So it probably might just overflow a bit, but hey, overflow meetings, overflowing time, that's the trend these days. And um, please use the chat for questions. We have muted the audience right now, but uh, in good times, you can use the raise hands as well. So if you have questions, we can have this webinar as an interactive version. And, and this is basically the future of Teams webinars anyway. So instead of using streaming like live events, uh, we will be using Teams meetings as webinars because we have plenty of capabilities how we can create these structured meetings in a way that the audience is not disturbing the speaker or speakers, for example. And with me, I have Subi Savola here. She is my moderator and she will be answering in the chat. And uh, there might be some other people from Sulava joining in who will be answering questions in the chat. So in case I'm going to miss those. But please do use raise hand if you have any questions and uh, so you can get answers there. But first, a couple of words about Sulava. And of course, I don't have any pressure because uh, our CEO has joined in as well. And uh, <laughs> so just uh, introducing Sulava very briefly that we are born in the cloud. And I think that's a really important part of us that we are, we are, we know the cloud. We know what's in here and what's coming. So we are staying up to date about the trends, what's going to happen, and we have the technical capabilities to help you out. So we work on the, basically on the cloud infrastructure and security, modern workplace and business productivity. But the way, for example, I am working, I'm combining both the modern workplace and business productivity more or less together because, hey, it's a modern workplace and it, it, it kind of infuses a lot of things together. There's about 130 of us and we have several MVPs uh, working with us. And, and I think uh, some of the greatest figures uh, with, on this slide is that uh, we have successfully moved over 1 million seats to Microsoft Cloud. And that's a big thing. We are situated and based in Helsinki, Finland, but we have uh, several other offices or presence or, uh, in different areas of Europe and Gulf region. And our services for better work life, this is a kind of big slide. This is more like a, a, in detail what kind of services we have. And what I, I represent basically is, of course, Teams uh, with some forms and Power Platform, Power Apps, Automations, Integration, SharePoint Office. And yeah, it's a kind of a big thing. It's modern work all over the place. And we offer three, three services through consulting services, advisory services, for example, if you are looking forward, okay, what's coming up, what's in the roadmap, how should you should be taking care of that. And of course, we have training services, so you don't uh, have to buy, for example, Power Apps, uh, knowledge for uh, uh, implementation from outside, but hey, we can help and train your people to do the Power Apps themselves. And if you are interested, please be in touch with us. I said I have a few slides about the ad slides in the beginning. And we have several offerings as uh, in this kind of a proof of concept uh, road mapping uh, kind of a, uh, well offer. And this is one uh, based on the Teams as a platform, but it could be about utilizing Teams more or Teams modern as a modern workplace adoption or just pure plat power platform as well. So we have a very compact offerings you can take advantage of. And for example, this one is all about building the roadmap and building the, building the proof of concept solution that you can already get started on using. 
My name is Vesanopanen. Of course, please do call me Vesku. Some people refer me as Mr. Teens. And uh, I, I like that title because especially I didn't invent that. It was given to me by a person I didn't know very closely. So yeah, I'm proud of that. But I'm a principal consultant uh, at Modern Work slash Teams lead uh, working for Sulava. And I'm also a Microsoft MVP. And I welcome everyone to join my LinkedIn network. And of course, please do follow my uh, my blog and my Twitter in there. So let's connect. And in six minutes, I have reached the agenda. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a long day, as you can see. There's a lots of things here that we are going to cover. Uh, first, I'm really excited about the Teams Connect. And uh, then I will be talking about Teams meetings slash virtual events. Well, these are the same thing these days. And um, I have also some demo coming up in there related to Teams meetings. Uh, well, I'm pretty excited about that myself. But of course, there's going to be other Microsoft Teams news and other demos as well. So it's a kind of a, going to be a full uh, 84 minutes or, or something like that. And if you don't have your coffee or tea yet, it might be a good idea to kind of uh, grab one soon or in the, uh, because we don't have any breaks here. <laughs> Uh, okay, there's some discussion in the chat, but uh, uh, if somebody was not able to join via Edge, but by using Chrome, I got access to, uh, to webinar. Interesting. Uh, perhaps it's about the short link because we are sharing the short link how you can usually join these webinars, and that's a best practice. Never use direct URLs, so that was kind of tips and tricks section not related to Teams Connect. And now you may have had already time to read the slide, but I'm really excited about Teams Connect because that's all about shared channels. That was the new feature released at Ignite, and it allows you to work with your network without a tenant switch. And that's the kind of big thing. You can invite externals to your specific channel in a team, so they can work with you, chat with you, work with the documents and write from within their own tenant. So when you are starting to create a new channel in the future, that's this is coming out around June, July. Uh, June is mentioned, but uh, it might be July. But basically, is you, are, you have an ability to create a shared channel. And so everyone, people you choose from your organization or other organizations can have access to that. And so, and when you are adding the persons, you can see you are adding just the specific persons uh, that may be external. So, and outside you're just adding their email address for externals. And I included this screenshot here to show that, okay, it was the kind of a, some uh, SPD fabric and whatever uh, in the Ignite demo, because uh, it's not a guest X. It, that's the identity from there. Azure AD. So it's kind of a federated access to Teams channels. And, and when you start creating that, you can create your own channel and, and you can, of course, choose some of your internals as well. And I really like that idea that you perhaps you have an HR team and you have an upcoming an HR project or IT team and you want to create this project under the HR, but you want to invite some other people from your uh, organization to participate in the project, but you don't want them to have the access to the rest of the team. And this is, so it's kind of groundbreaking in the way it's going to change the collaboration again. I, I called it in my blog post about a revolution uh, or kind of revolution uh, in, in a collaboration again, but uh, that's something that's opening up a new doors. How do you work with others internal? Or external and especially with external because this is a big thing it's in a private preview and uh, it's and it's coming up this summer and how it looks in there is that when you have your internal team okay there we can see that there's a chat channel uh, icon that's kind of a okay there, there that's a specific kind of channel so it's showing up on my team but it's telling me because this channel is shared with members from other organizations and for this external person, it's going to show that, okay, there's the team name and, uh, and um, 
uh, that are launch team, and there's the kind of the organization it belongs to, and there's the chair channel. So they are not seeing the rest of the channel I have in uh, that the X150 launch team has in here. So this is why it's a big thing. There isn't much information about that, but there's a, uh, some uh, demos in the Ignite sessions. So go ahead and check out those if you are interested. But um, when there's going to be more information, you will hear about that from me. All right. So Teams meeting evolution. It's going on. It's never stopping. So before this or before Ignite, we had a lot of new features coming up. Uh, I actually did my previous Spotlight webinar that was in Finnish as an interactive webinar as well. So that was the biggest public uh, Teams uh, interactive webinar in the world. Uh, definitely in the Finland, but I'm under impression that was in the world. That was the first time when you had a really big, we had over 500 attendees in that webinar. So, so it was a, a kind of a groundbreaking experience. How you are bringing these features up and how do you use them in the webinars? How do you take advantage of that? And that's basically coming up. Uh, that was released at Ignite. 1000 person meetings. And uh, if that's not enough, then you can overflow to 20K. So, so for those people who are attending beyond that limit, 300 or 1000, depending on your subscription, and they, will, they are going to get a notification, okay, you are joining as a view only. But that's scaling up automatically. Yes, admins have to enable that, but uh, after that, uh, you can just go ahead and, uh, and start using that. So if you, if you are kind of hitting on the limit, then you know that people are still going to be able to join in. If we suddenly had 10,000 people in these webinars, they would be uh, around 9,000 would be joining as a uh, view only. So that that's a kind of great thing. It's happening automatically there if it's enabled. And uh, webinar capabilities are a kind of a registration process that helps you to kind of sign up for these webinars. I'm going to talk about that more in a moment. And but there was other kind of um, uh, announcements like view shifter, so you can switch easily between uh, kind of having this gallery view or you have a together mode enabled. Yes, we could be using together mode in this webinar. That's cool too. And uh, but also that you can kind of have to align the attendee uh, kind of uh, videos on the top instead of on the side, etc. All the little things. But that's only telling about that these things are progressing. It's not a huge step forward anymore because lots of these were announced at the last Ignite in spring, uh, autumn 2020. Uh, but um, instead, things are progressing. They are going forward. You are getting things like presenter mode. I'm going to show that in a moment. But uh, and in the roadmap that should be coming up this month is also whiteboarding with the externals. That's not out yet. And meetings that are more secure, like when you only the people you invite can join that. So if somebody sharing the link outside, they cannot join it. That's a really, really great on security and compliance part as well. So you're getting a lot of features there that's going to help things. And especially if you are running with Dynamics 365 marketing, you can combine those webinars with Teams and then kind of have that post a, a webinar marketing part in there. So you have some more engagement. PowerPoint live presentation integration with Teams is great because that allows even more people to join in and see the translations, for example, and react there. So it's going to be much more rich than what's usually with the uh, presenter view in Teams, for example. So this is what's happening this month. So all of these should be rolling out. They, they, are, they are either or are out already. Uh, 20k view only meetings. I think it's out because the way uh, the documentation in uh, Microsoft is stating that in a format that it seems like it's out, and you can already do the PowerShell commands to enable it. And uh, it's uh, available for everyone with E3, E5 licensing, A3, A3 A5 licensing. So uh, you should, uh, it should be okay for that. And but something that's coming, that's coming around April or uh, even later. Some things that were not released, uh, but they are in, still in the roadmap, of course, is chat bubbles. 
when the uh, chat can be kind of centered on the screen, video control to tune up your video a bit more, uh, polymorph improvements, um, I'm going to have a slide on that. And um, video control, sorry, I uh, mixed uh, video filters with video control, but the video control is important for webinars because that will allow us to hard mute the video. So basically attendees won't, won't be able to open the, their video camera during the uh, presentation, unless we allow them. But what I really picked up from the Ask the Expert sessions at Ignite, this is not on the roadmap, and, but they were said publicly, so that's why I can mention them, is basically that the Microsoft team is working on the uh, moderate Q&A uh, for these meetings, which is something we really want to see because that's a big gap and multiple spotlights, so you could have a panel of experts there that are spotlighted instead of just a single person, and of course working and working on streaming to social media. That, that's also a great kind of a, a addition, where instead of just having the 20k views, you might be able to stream to something, something more. But uh, chat bubbles, video control, poly improvements and video filters should be coming up next month in April. But as always, roadmap is an estimate. There may be some last-minute uh, issues which will which may delay things. So it's kind of a best guess at the moment when they are coming up, and that can change. But that's something some expectancy in there. And this is a kind of few, just a few pictures about upcoming features. But but the one on the uh, top left is the uh, about the future or actually what's in the now. Uh, the world is hybrid. We are going to be in a hybrid works, workplace in the future as well. It's just not through, during this uh, uh, COVID situation, but it's going to continue. People are going to be working more from home or from anywhere. So we will have much more meetings that are going to be, uh, some people are online and some people are on site. And that would be a kind of now a great idea. I really love that demo at Ignite because they originally have the table structure set like you have a traditional uh, long table and a uh, view screen at the end. That's a traditional way. But if you twist that uh, or to sideways and start to think about, okay, we always have some people attending this meeting from the other side, from online world. And that's a kind of big thing to kind of start thinking about, should we uh, reshape our meeting rooms so it will support that situation better instead of what we have now. So kind of the preparing for the future, what's coming up uh, with these meetings. And of course, we are going to be working, working more on hybrid environment. We, we have to have capabilities for that. It's about how, how we work together, what are the working practices. And I think the shared channels is an, another one example how Teams product group is thinking about okay how we are going to be making things easier for people. They are clearly focusing a lot on meetings and a lot of that on that collaboration side. So some features may be kind of lagging a bit behind in there. All right, and the other parts. I really wait for this presenter view, uh, which is basically uh, sorry presenter mode, uh, which is basically allowing you to use the uh, this. Um, a video cam on top of your presentation. So you have will have clearly a few options there that okay you could be side to side or you could be kind of slightly overlapped. So it's a kind of a great way to create more engaging presentations without having to use external software like OBS or, or something else. It's possible to do it today already but you need some more skills and some more software uh, for that. But in the future, it's going to be a lot easier. And also, we are what's highlighting here on the bottom left is that you have seen how the dynamic views are showing up. So it's scaling up the content and cameras, and, and we can see the people on top there, uh, depending on what what's, is being displayed. So it's, again, a much more engaging uh, situation there. How, how do you in, uh, interact with these webinars and meetings? It, it's much better looking than what it is now. And the webinar capabilities I mentioned, they should be rolling out this March completed early next month, and it will be in included in E3, E5 and Business Standard Premium, and of course E3 and A5, A3 and A5 
uh, licenses. So it's going to be there. And no, there wasn't any word about Teams Pro at the Ignite. I was very disappointed about that because I was really expecting to have more clearance. So I don't know what's going on with that, but uh, this was just mentioned these licensing requirements there. What else was not mentioned at the Ignite was the uh, breakout rooms view uh, advancement. So unfortunately, I didn't have anything on the slides there about it, but uh, probably all these features are going to be rolling out eventually. They are just gradually coming in, and so we will see the continuous improvement in there. But the webinar capabilities are coming, and that's a kind of big thing that uh, once these roll out, you can start creating these webinars right from the new meeting part. And it will then allow, kind of let you know that, okay, is the re registration required? And this is something your admins need to set. On default, it will be on for people in your organ guests or in your own organization and guests. So it's going to be on, on default. But uh, admins can change that, that you can invite externals to these webinars as well. And then you will be able to create this form, uh, put in the speakers, uh, put in the registration fields, there's also a custom question there. And uh, then, then when they register in, you will get a link to that page. You can start sharing. And when they register in, they will get a kind of email that uh, they are going to get the seat reserved there. So it's a kind of a, a very easy way to get the webinar registration. And when it goes forward, and you have that meeting, you have, and you will have this, I think the attendance page is coming in April is that you can see that, okay, who attended, uh, how long they were there in there, uh, etc. So you can see how the webinar actually went. And, and you have a nice summary, but then you have the option to follow up with participants. And I think in the first phase, it's going to be with Dynamics 365 Marketing. So you can connect that webinar to, the, uh, to your Dynamics organization, and you can have this post uh, webinar post event activities and engagement uh, with the attendees so you can market your products better and this offering there's going to be e3 uh, offering for e3 and e5 customers to get six months of dynamics marketing uh, uh, trial out there's there wasn't much details about that yet but uh, it should be coming so that's one step but of course the real thing is that if you are using an external software to do this kind of post-processing, post-marketing part, is that or our webinar registration part, is that going to be really needed? So can you save costs there? Or and when the APIs or other in integrations are coming to these webinars, so you could be using the Teams signups, but uh, then you could do the kind of a marketing part or marketing automation in the other software. So it's, a, it's going to be interesting there. And there's going to be, I have soon time for the first demo. I seem to be using my time with the slides a lot. But there's going to be the uh, forms volume moments. And I really wait for this. As you have seen uh, uh, at least some polls here, what we are running right now is that you can answer those polls as very, very, especially very easily when you're using the Teams desktop. But other, on other clients, you can use the chat for that. But we will have more options there, like open text polls. That's a really big gap, so we can get feedback from people. We could be using you, uh, asking you uh, to provide a feedback about the webinar in a, uh, at the end without having to launch a separate uh, kind of form uh, under URL to collect those responses. But also, if you are running some quiz or, or doing some kind of a tests for people, you could mark correct uh, answer choices. and. Um, and also, you can, can start be answering those polls in a mobile app. And of course, I really like the shortened URL process that's already in there. So you can share the forms, polls with the shorter URL. But these are coming around April, most of this. So that's a kind of great thing. We can start taking advantage of these new polls next month. And now, I can finally uh, go into the demo really soon. What's really great uh, is that you can start creating applications using Power Platform, so uh, with Power Apps, and uh, and you can connect that application uh, to the meeting, Teams meeting. Okay, this was 
more or less released in November. That way you can create those meeting applications. But um, uh, that was not usually connected to the specific meeting. And now what we have, uh, uh, and if we are able to do those, you would have to be a kind of pro developer. You would have to go with the full code stack and host them in Azure or somewhere else and well, basically all the difficult stuff. But now it is possible to create these applications with Power Apps. And that means that your power users, your citizen devs, your consultants can start creating custom applications tailored to you that can be added to meetings and they are in a way uh, meeting aware. So you, they, you can kind of know, okay, this, when this application is added to the meeting, it knows the meeting in a sense. And, uh, and when you do actions there, they can be linked to that specific meeting. And also it's going to be aware about, is it going to be displayed in a, uh, in a meeting details tab, or is it going to be a side panel in the team, during the Teams meeting? Of course, this uh, in-meeting part works only on Teams desktop at the moment. And this one only works for Dataverse for Teams uh, Power Apps. So you cannot create an ordinary Power App and connect that to the meeting, but instead it's a Dataverse for Teams. And the thing, I really enjoy the idea that, okay, when you attach that Power App to the meeting, how about if you start connecting that uh, you have an HR interview and you have an application for that that has specific questions or you want to enter some information. You connect that application to that applicant that's going to be in an HR system and you will have that information overlaid to you during the meeting. Or perhaps it's connected to the project and you, when you add new tasks there, it goes to the project tasks or to the project logo. Or it's about a customer, so it's fetching information for, from a custom source, for example. And okay, it may sound a bit vague and that's why I have a demo. So let's go. Finally, we are going to go uh, for a demo part. And how I'm going to do this, okay, let's uh, see when my calendar opens, that I have, a, I have some meetings here and I can go ahead and just go to the edit mode so I can see I'm the organizer of the meeting and I have already added the meeting up there. And, and what I can see here is that it's opening the application and it's telling me, okay, this is a pre-post meeting screen. I have attached this one to the, this meeting. Uh, yeah, that's one caveat. It's not automatically getting up what this meeting is all about, but that's something simple. You can have provide a list of meetings and okay, I can just choose, okay, this is connected to that specific meeting. And then I have the ability to connect this to a specific team I'm in. And this is something I added uh, there. Okay, let's not connect to that there. I'll go for the platform company, keep it connected there. And so if I do something, it's going to have a context of that team. And so, so I can use those team resources. I can do things. I could do uh, put things in the team to that team planner or to the OneNote, put the meeting notes automatically to team OneNote, for example. And that's pretty sweet. So, so, so you can connect your meetings from standalone to the real true business processes. So let's join in. I'm not going to use any audio here. I don't have to have a second camera on either. So I'm just showing it solo that, okay, I have that meeting up here, just like I have forms application in, right now in here, is that uh, I can open the meeting application and it's telling me, inside the meeting as an organizer. So I'm an organizer in that meeting and I can just go ahead, uh, where's my, there, just some delay, uh, seem to be some delay there. Okay, let's put a, a spotlight uh, demo task. And this is just a simple way of showing that this task is going, uh, for example, to my to-do. So it's not, not too complex. I'm adding a task, okay, it was a bit long, it's not showing the whole information. This is proof of concept demo I was building this weekend. So I can pop out the tasks and see, okay, what's happening there. And I can see, okay, there's this task already in there. Uh, yeah, it's a long one, but that's that's the task I added. And okay, I, and then I can, what I did also in there, okay, let's see that, is that 
we can see tasks added in, that, in this meeting. So everyone who joins this meeting later can see who added and what tasks. So you have a kind of more, okay, let's do this together feeling, because then you know, okay, who added tasks for themselves. And as we can see, if we add new tasks there, uh, okay, I lost my teams there. Okay, let's put it back. Thank you. Uh, is that um, I just add in a new task. And when I go here, I can see it appear there quite rapidly. And, but this is not all I did uh, in this process as a demo, because I want to highlight some things what you can uh, really do here, is that once they show up here, is I did two things. Uh, the other ones are not, okay, now they are showing up. Is that I have added uh, this uh, automatically to the channel. So basically I'm adding that task to the channel as a text. So everyone in the team knows that, okay, I added the task for myself in this team's meeting. And that's on my context, that's on under my name. But there, there was also a possibility to add a trigger. Uh, and you can see I have a couple of different versions there running up. Is that I can add a flow with this uh, adaptive card there. So I'm just basically adding that uh, flow information to the team channel uh, based on the trigger. So if whenever there's something happening in the in the meeting, when, when it's been written to the table, I can act on that. And that's only to show that the outer space is the limit because we can use Power Platform, we can use the connectors, we can use Power Automate to connect to very different uh, backend systems and, and to different places we can automate things. So it's when it's done in the, during the meeting, it's really happening in the background. And of course, what I want to show, there's a Friday mashup that was created by the admin. So I'm, I'm not an uh, I'm not the organizer in this application. And if I go to this meeting app, this is also sensitive to that. Okay, if if I'm a, the organizer or not, I'm not the organizer, so I cannot do any changes here. So it's noting that one. And if I go to the meeting here, we can see that it's uh, going to show. Uh, I really should have named the application a bit better, but uh, basically it's going to show I'm a participant and I can still add tasks. Uh, so that, that's a kind of a, a great thing about these meeting connected applications, what you can already do in Teams. And I don't really think there has been uh, anything public about this. This first appeared in, I saw it in a mentioned in a Twitter some <coughs> a few weeks ago. But there hasn't been anything out there. So I guess you are the first ones ever to see this kind of demo. And this is something you can start using or creating already if you want. But, but what I really enjoy on this is how, how important the Power Platform is going to be, how, how important it is to start gathering skills on the Power Platform and Power Apps so you can create these to your needs. Of course, we can help and, and we'd be happy to help you in there. Okay, then the news to, as, uh, going forward, some new stream updates. Okay, and there was a poll about that, uh, about how cool that was that. And I really hope, uh, of course, I want to see how, how co cool you felt it was before I add. You can read the slide, of course, and, and see uh, what's coming up. But uh, let me see just some results. Interesting. I can see use a need for that. Some people, nothing special. And for some, it was cool. Let's be that's about that. And yeah, um, but so it's really interesting piece of tech. But of course, new stream is interesting. Uh, there were some updates to stream, nothing major, I think. Uh, there's going to be a new stream, uh, stream video player. Well, nothing new in a sense. It, uh, these were all published earlier uh, or mentioned earlier, but it's just taking more steps forward about the new video player for stream. So where you can kind of have a better high quality player in there embedded inside SharePoint and OneDrive. So we can see this is a very uh, useful view for us. But we can already start using the 
uh, web parts in the SharePoint to start integrating these videos uh, directly from our document libraries in there. And uh, the new web app is coming, and as you can see, it's like a forms now, so it's going to be fully embedded directly within uh, Office 365 menu. So it's not a separate application like it is now, but it's directly in there. So this is the trend we are going to be seeing most likely because Forms is in that form and eventually some others uh, most likely will be. The migration tool from the old uh, stream to new one is going to preview uh, during summer. But of course, when you start thinking about what's the deal with new stream, is that, uh, okay, we don't have that stream portal anymore, but instead we are uploading these recordings and videos directly to our uh, document libraries in SharePoint, li uh, SharePoint sites. And that is allowing us to create different kind of uh, video portals. So we don't have just one portal we can edit, but we can create new uh, site pages there and use the highlight content web part and the stream, uh, video player web part or, or the file viewer just to show around what's available there. And of course, to make it a bit like more demoish here, is that I have added a video page to one of these themes. And yeah, so it's a video page, it's a modern SharePoint page on this site. So it's connected to this team. And I have added a couple of, uh, a couple of videos there. I'm not going to play back them, but basically we have the integrated video player right within, uh, from within uh, teams and, and, or in the SharePoint page. And we can have the trending videos and all the other stuff we want to include in the normal SharePoint page. So these web parts work really marvelously when you start thinking about, okay, how should this uh, library be there? Uh, how do I want to make a training video library? How do I want to make this uh, welcome to, uh, to the office uh, or welcome to, to the company videos? So this is a very interesting way to start using this. Okay. Uh, what else uh, is there for uh, Teams? Of course, there were some uh, more highlights. It's uh, from Ignite or pre-Ignite. It's about all about the roadmap. Things are progressing and so on. Uh, big things there is the upcoming end-to-end -end encryption for Teams calls. Uh, when you are calling someone in the one-to-one -one call, it can be encrypted. And, and that's, of course, to call, also to show out that, okay, Teams calls are secure from end-to-end. And there are special cases when you don't want anyone, even any compliance or anything else, to kind of attach to that call. And there's going to be more compliance options to that later. But, uh, uh, sorry. But basically, it's if you are exchanging information about passwords or some other com uh, very confidential information, you may want your call to be encrypted. Multi-geo support is coming, so Teams is going to be more aware of, uh, about the. Uh, uh, where it is being used, so you can, if your organization is global, you may want to take advantage of that. SharePoint is already multi-geo supporting, so that's kind of a one good step there. Um, teams templates are a big thing. How do you kind of create a uh, new teams? So you can define those uh, templates there, what's going to be in your team, and it's going to get a customized tab, a website tab applications included in templates next month. But it's already rolling out the policies who, what kind of uh, templates we are showing up to specific persons and uh, how you manage those uh, templates with PowerShells. So this is all coming up. Uh, interesting part was the roster plans uh, that can come into Planner, where you can use Graph API to create uh, planners without Office 365 or Microsoft 365 group. So that's kind of a uh, that, that's kind of a very big thing. There was a question about is this modern SharePoint page with multiple video web parts a replacement for stream portal channels? And in a way, yes. That's the way you are going to be doing them. You don't have that old stream. It's going to eventually phase out, but it's going to take a long time for that. But uh, it's, it's going to be the way how you should start creating those uh, new video portals. And when, when you have a kind of channel, because it's very natural to have that in a specific site. And that gives you lots of options. Uh, who are the editors there and how do you create those? But coming back to the roster plans in Planner, it's basically about when you create a, this kind of planner without a plan, without the Microsoft 365 group, 
it allows you to kind of add people there. It's a much more lightweight. You don't have all the parts of the uh, group there, but uh, it's only possible through the Graph API, but it can be enabled or disabled by your admins. And if it's enabled, anyone should be able to use that API to create those. Uh, big thing about task publishing is that checklist and editing for published lists is coming very soon, so we can take more advantage of that. In my previous webinar, I was already I had showcased about the test publishing, how you should be using. So please go ahead and check that recording. But uh, when this editing comes up, so in the May spotlight, I'm going to show, of course, that in live, unless you have already uh, gotten the familiarized yourself with that. Safe links for teams. Um, yeah, that's a good security improvement. We all need those, but that's just something that's happening behind the scenes. People are seeing that there's that change, but it's really helping us to work better because it's more secure uh, and kind of uh, helping us from the spammers as well, uh, too. But the co-authoring of encrypted documents uh, is coming. And uh, I think that was, I have a typo there. I think it was supposed to be April, but I accidentally brought March. But about March, April there, uh, it's going to be able to, if you have information protection on, or when you should be basically have, you can use Teams editing, for example, for that. Or in, in the office apps, so that's a great improvement. Transferring calls between devices, so if you join via mobile or you have a tablet and you just want to join it in, it's, it's possible to do really easily. And the policy package management groups is there, are going to be there as well. So you can assign these policy packages to a people in specific group. Of course, things like uh, uh, interesting to admins is like you have will have a graph API uh, for to get templates or for developers, so you can get information about the templates and um, app risk evaluation for admins is coming to the admin portal, so you can kind of see okay this is a high risk application or not. And if you are using a lots of calls. The new calling plan uh, expands is coming by the end of June, and Finland is included, so you don't have to kind of build a uh, kind of uh, build your own. Um, uh, I forgot the term. Sorry about that. But basically, you can create a, a calling plan plan right from within Microsoft Cloud. So you can attach specific calling numbers, and they will uh, end up in Teams calls. So you can call to them. Uh, Call to the person using mobile line and the person can answer in Teams. And so it's going to be really easy to set up with that. Uh, Microsoft List is getting lots of updates. I didn't even list all of them, but uh, the ones I really enjoy is the creating your own templates that should be coming soon and creating the rules so we can have the kind of uh, alert when something has happening uh, as a notification when something's happening on the list. Commenting at mentions, yes. But of course, what we can show really soon is how the calendar view works. And Teams mobile app is getting updates. Unfortunately, I don't have an iOS device. This is coming to the iOS first, but Android will follow and then I will see what's happening with the updates. But there's going to be a much more better experience there. There's also going to be a kind of low data mode. And, and uh, things like that, but it's going to look a lot better. Of course, what I'm looking for is this expanded list of emojis. Uh, my poor co-workers will have to suffer from that one. But um, of course, pinning chats, better chat experience, etc. is something that's really needed. And once we get back to traveling world, the accessing files while Teams is offline is also a great thing. Okay, I can show a few demos. <coughs> Okay. Okay. Um, was it uh, about the stream or something earlier? Uh, yeah, I, I answered that already. So, and uh, Catherine, if you still have, if you missed my answer, then let me know and I can uh, answer it again or come in, come back to you later on that. Okay, let's do a few demos. So we are not dragging too long here. And okay, this is not the demo I wanted to show because first one I have to show this one. Uh, something something that's what I added to Teams was the history menu. So if you go to your back button when you are using the Teams desktop, you can go back in history. So we can kind of click around and it will open the place where we 
uh, we're in so we can see okay what's uh, what's happening here so that's easy to miss unless you accidentally leave your cursor there and but what else uh, we can have is that uh, I mentioned the lists uh, view in here so I have one list created as a demo scheduler in here earlier I have a couple of tasks there that have a date and if you go to the all items here you can create a new view I have already created one calendar view but I'm going to show the create new view let's put it a uh, calendar uh, 2 and I can choose it to be a calendar view there and I can so I use this date there, what, what we are going to be say, uh, use the start as a an, uh, kind of an end date there, and is it a public or not, and we can uh, choose what we are going to be showing on the title of that calendar. So when we create the view, it's there. And uh, uh, I think I should have had some tasks there at least, uh, okay, I missed, missed those when I used the different I shouldn't have play around what, uh, on what to show. Let's go back to calendar and, and we can. Okay, I don't have that calendar view anymore. No, this is fun. Okay, so that was the demo effect of today. It didn't like me creating two calendar views. So that's perhaps something to learn uh, from there. So we can, uh, as you saw, we can create new views, but don't create two calendar views because that's going to crash. Hey, you always learn something new in these demos. But, and uh, of course, it was ha would have been great to show around uh, what, what's in the, uh, in the list there, but I didn't have a new date for that one, so let's just go ahead and uh, add a draft new date there, and we can put it to be early, early May there, and save it, and we should be able to see it now. There's some uh, lag there for some reason, but let's go and are we seeing it? No, we don't. Interesting. But uh, it should be there. Okay, not the best demo, but it's there. Experiment and figure out how, how it really works. Um, that's what happens when you come to think about this in, on, on running. And what was also interestingly released, but that uh, that's not uh, mentioned much, much is that there's this uh, math application. Let me just see if I can see the math preview application. That's coming for edu education side, but you can start creating, uh, let it solve like a, some uh, formulas there if you want, or, or kind of uh, solving equations and then kind of showing up uh, what are the results there. So it's kind of a uh, interesting little application and, and have a much better uh, kind of a uh, um, calculator side in there, etc. So it's it's same for the education side, but it might be useful sometimes otherwise as well. Okay, then I don't have too many demos, so I still have time to go through the other other parts. But one of the demos I want to show is the poly, uh, policies, template policies. So let's open the admin center for Teams. And this is the environment I created this earlier, so that's why I'm using that one. But your admins can go, go to template policies and they can see uh, the policies there. Of course, you can go to edit them or assign them directly to specific users. But we have seen that the demo has uh, three templates that are viewed and some that are hidden. So it's very easy to start making changes to these uh, templates that are going to be viewed uh, for users. And you can assign these to specific users, or basically if you are using PowerShell, you can kind of automate that stuff or using the uh, policy packages as well. So it's going to be very much helpful for you to tune in what kind of uh, options your users will have when they start creating a new team. I didn't save those changes, so they are just seeing three templates instead of everything. And this was something that was really, really lagging. Uh, from those templates. That was the shortest demo time I think I ever did. Um, okay, the demo guys are with you. Yeah, they weren't this time. That happens when you're doing live demos, and that's why I like them as well, because, uh, yeah, uh, a reminder, test everything before you really do the demo. 
I, I thought I would be a clever one and just do it on, on the fly. And that happens. But it's rolling in. You saw it. It's there. But uh, pay attention what you are doing there. Because I didn't. Okay. Uh, something that's related to teams and uh, that's very important for some of the organizations is the Azure Communication Services. This was released or announced uh, at the previous Ignite and in this Ignite this was announced that, that there's now a Teams integration. So it has an interoperability, yeah, so that's a tough, tough word for me, uh, with Teams. So you can kind of create scenarios when you have people uh, work, uh, calling to each other with browser and browser, browser to application. An application would be the Teams desktop here. And so employees can use Teams while your customers or partners or somebody else is using a uh, browser or web, uh, mobile, mobile device application or a web browser and call, basically having that call from there. This enables you to kind of create login or a kind of secure login there if you like or some way of uh, process there uh, or you could just have a kind of very easy way for your first line workers to contact people uh, your kind of call center and of course you can put logic in between that's the process in there that's very important that you could have a bot for example first there and then you would have the real person uh, so, so you can create much more kind of calling center style scenarios there. And this is going to be very ideal for uh, lots of domains like healthcare. You could have remote care solutions where people have to log in more securely and then they take a call, call with the doctor. Or financiers, uh, banking advisors, that's the same thing. We want to be sure that the person is there here. There's some kind of authentication in there. Customer service and supporting, everything like that. And it's going to look just like that, basically. That. And on your website, you, this is from an Ignite demo. If you are interested about that, check out the Ignite sessions. Is that they can kind of start the video call. They can enter some information. Okay, this is the camera I want to use. This is the microphone. So you have a similar setup as in Teams, but you are not setting up any client and you are not seeing the URL. So you have a custom calling app there. You can, it's something you can customize and you can create your own and use these features to connect that and kind of relay that call directly to Teams uh, to the person. So your employee would be using Teams desktop and your client is using calling from a website. And this was lacking from Teams. This was available for Skype for Business at, at, at some point of time, but then it kind of faded away and there was a, a situation where this wasn't available for a few years, but now it's coming back with this. So if you have these kind of situations, please be in touch with us because, yeah, we can help you take this forward. Uh, okay, uh, there's a question about nice present, uh, presentation update. Previous demo, you are uh, attending this meeting and showed how you connected to other meeting. How is that possible? Uh, in this case, I'm using a virtual machine running in Azure. So, uh, so that's where I run the other Teams desktop. And otherwise, uh, there was possibility to hack your uh, system to have two Teams desktops running up, but uh, it had some glitches, like if I closed the other meeting, I might have closed my real meeting as well, so I didn't want to use that anymore. So this uh, using it and in running that in a virtual machine is a lot better way uh, to do these demos. So uh, let's jump forward for Power Platform. And this is a big thing. You already saw my demo on the meeting app or meeting connected power app. And, and that's just telling that, okay, what you can do with the power platform. And it's going forward all the time. It's fully compliant there inside Microsoft Cloud, taking using the uh, platform or the Microsoft Cloud platform in there for identity, security, and, and all these parts that are needed for all these applications. And instead allowing your business users to focus on creating tailoring those solutions that really help your business. So and the Power Platform is a really good key there. There's a lots of things you can already do with Power Automate. You can automate processes, you can create approvals, you can uh, talk with the backend system, integrate uh, with the other space if you like. It's just going to take a while to get the message to Mars and back. But uh, in a sense, uh, you can create your custom connectors as well. And, and using the Azure in there, it's, Things are really possible, but 
uh, rolling back to the business user that we can somebody can create those connectors there and we just create those power platforms and start using them we can use to uh, create a power application instead of using excel file to update some certain things and when you are doing these in power platform you can also use them on teams mobile so these applications can be distributed to your users and yeah it's really better together and loving teams so it's a really good scenario i don't really think there's gonna this should not be any separate because I, I see that's why i said that i work in both modern workplace as business productivity because these are really interlaced and connected this is the modern world it's not just some specific silo somewhere but instead it's the overall thing so a uh, few updates the approval applications that's a great piece of applications that's already out there for you to use. It came out in January, but it has limits. Yeah, it was when you, especially when you start creating your own approval, it has very, very tough limits there. But uh, next month you can start attaching files from SharePoint and OneDrive or just uh, pasting a generic link. So it doesn't even have to be in Microsoft 365 environment, what is going to be approved. And the cool thing is that you can start creating the templates. <clears throat> so when you create a template, it's going to be easier to create leave requests or purchase uh, requests that are very lightweight. It's not a huge process, but it's very handy when you want to have the traceability in there. And of course, when you are using the Power Automate, you can already do this, uh, except for the Markdown support that has been visible in my demos because it looks like a bit uh, not uh, not very nice let's say that way but um, when the markdown support comes in you can create a beautiful kind of approval requests in there so it's very clear what you are approving but now you can already use power automate to include any file you want or any link and uh, but that's a great step forward the other one is of course power automate it didn't cut much new but what is it came what was announced is interesting uh, you will have the ability to create new automations from a message. So instead of going to the Power Automate application and creating a new flow from a template, which is pretty easy as well, but you can instead start creating them directly uh, to your messages, doing things in there. Then there seems to be having a lot of templates available, so you can uh, take your productivity forward with them. But also the Teams application store will have these Power Automate templates uh, available for easy uh, deployment. So you can use them really easily and they should be join, showing up this month or early next month. Uh, something else that uh, was really cool is the Power Automate desktop. That's basically a robotic process automation tool that has been with the Office 365 for, I don't know, two years, one and a half, uh, one and a half years at least. Um, the big news is that now included with Windows 10 license, so you can start using. You can start kind of uh, doing automations that are uh, related to this clicking around. It may be Excel, it may be uh, uh, forms in the web, it may be something you want to repeat. So you create testing processes or you just receive some information you want to process automatically. You don't want to do that clicking around. But they are copy pasting around manually, but you want to automate that so you can repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, and perhaps it's changing some variables. Of course, if you want to really use that, you will require premium licensing uh, if you want to connect this to, uh, to processes, but uh, there's nothing stopping you from using the Power Automate desktop to start automating this. I might have time to show that demo as well. And then the Power FX uh, was announced as well. That's the new low code programming language. That's basically the Power App language we are using now. So it's very familiar for anyone who has used Power Apps. But especially if you have used Excel. If you have used Excel formulas, it's going to be a lot similar to that. And, and the Power App, Power FX uh, is kind of the think about running, uh, going, doing these formulas in Excel they are evaluated instantly. So, so it's recalculating them all the time. That same happens with Power Up. When you are doing changes, you are doing formulas, which color we are showing or something like that. And if it can evaluate that equation, it will show the result on the screen or already when you are doing that. So it's kind of a, a very different way from a, 
uh, from a traditional programming language when you are going in through in steps. But instead, all this is happening all the, uh, behind the scenes all the time. Well, it's not changing anything for power apps or anything uh, anywhere at the moment. It was just an announced, but it's going to go forward. It's going to be the language for other power platform parts like Microsoft Dataverse and, uh, and Power Automate. Well, yeah, I really hope that the Power Automate would get this soon. And Power Virtual Agents when you can start adding logic there. And it will allow you to kind of use this or create pa uh, Power Platform uh, with the Visual Studio Code. So if you are pro dev and you rather use that and you connect that to the source control and, and, and you use all that, it will be possible. So it's kind of scaling up the skills that you can be a low code developer, work directly in a Power App Studio, or you could be a very pro and, and you can kind of use more advanced features from there. So that's, a, that's the kind of thing why it is interesting and it's great. And on the Power Platform and Teams, uh, it's not about teaching anyone any, anyone to code, but instead turning any uh, turn anyone a developer with the low code. So you don't have to be a kind of a pro developer to be able to develop these applications. That has been always the case with the Power Platform. And now it's going to be even more easier. The Dataverse for Teams allows lots of things like that meeting application. I, I keep coming back to that because that's a kind of great piece there. And it just shows how what you can do with this. And, and you, the environment maximum count is increasing from 500 to 10K. So it's clear that, okay, people are using Dataverse for Teams. Hey, it's included in Teams license. That Power App exam meeting are connected Power App example I did didn't require any extra licenses. That's basically with just Teams license. But if you run out of uh, Dataverse for Teams capabilities, there is now available to, uh, you can upgrade it to full Dataverse. Of course, you have to pay for that. Uh, you can distribute Dataverse for Teams applications broadly, so it's not limited to that single team, but instead that applications can be used by a lot more people in your organization when they are using it through Teams. Power Virtual Agents gets more AI enhancements. It's going to be now in public preview or very soon about uh, how they are figuring out uh, the conditions, what is triggering there or what kind of a uh, chat is happening. But most importantly, there's going to be more enhancements to management and governance for, uh, for admins and IT pros, basically tenant-wide reporting parts and protecting specific endpoints. So you, so you can allow to use a specific SQL server, for example, but you are limited what can access that. And data loss prevention, like you can read from a Twitter, but you don't, you don't have permissions to write there. So you can start controlling the environment better and better. And, and basically it's all about this all kind of a, uh, conclude there with the, that you have the platform you can trust that's very powered with the AI and enables us to do this remote and hybrid, hybrid work, kind of bringing up more and more tools how we can work better here. And have these fusion teams where you have these local developers and pro developers working together, creating awesome business uh, tailored uh, applications. And yeah, hyper automation like automate everything that's a kind of good 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 idea there i think i can show a uh, quick demo about um, let's show uh, how we are doing the using the power automate desktop so i have you can see there's lots of options we could be doing we we could be working with folders we could be working uh, kind of doing some web automation uh, like uh, form filling uh, web data extraction and 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 so on. Yeah, there's lots of things like clipboarding, message boxes, Outlook, Exchange. I don't see Teams there, but but okay. Uh, we are just filling up a very simple form, so, and and we can have these variables in there, and when we can read the results from the form, and just by running and and let's see if this if I have demo cards with me today. So it, it's automatically firing up one browser and and start adding things to this. Uh, form, it's it's not very lightning speed. It takes a few moments, but it's just adding me and submitting the response. And I got the uh, basically the uh, the values into my uh, into my variables in here.
and then I could reuse them. Of course, I can use desktop recorder to kind of record things, but the, the real thing is how you connect this with business processes to take this further. And I just got that response in here. Uh, let's just refresh the form, and yeah, we just got the response. And, and we can see that's in there, and yeah, it did rock. Uh, that's quite cool. Uh, something else we might want to do is that when we create those data first for Teams applications, uh, I have lots of applications running inside my Power Apps, but you can start using adding these applications to your Teams. And I think I used this uh, milestones example here. I created that for uh, the platform IT team. And um, in the, from there, uh, I can kind of arrange on, or I can control that application. I can do the changes. I can work with the team and, and see what's happening there. But what I really want to see uh, uh, after that is that, uh, that I want everybody else to use it. So I can go ahead and share that application with colleagues. And I can choose some security groups or uh, groups. And I can tell them, OK, is this application going to be available to, for them or not? And it will do all the hard work about sharing things, making sure that they can use specific things, uh, etc. So it's basically allowing that, that, that everyone in your company can go ahead and install and use those applications. And when they go for the application store, the, yeah, I have a lot of applications here uh, built for this demo environment, built by your colleagues. And there's a small show more in the bo uh, bottom. And I will be seeing the IT milestones here that I could go ahead and add as a personal app, or I could add it to the team or chat. That's a really great way how you can start using this Dataverse for Teams applications. Uh, when the Dataverse for Teams came out, it was kind of not clear that, okay, how you do you have to do you have to be a member of that team to use it? No. So that's a kind of very, very big thing in there. Some people have to run already, and I am, I'm not even on, on overtime yet. Okay. Uh, but that was great. Then we have some Viva. Uh, I'm going to be brief about this one. Uh, Viva got some clearance, okay, what it is all about and, and uh, how it's going to be built. It's basically uh, kind of enhancing teams. If, if you think about, uh, for example, uh, Microsoft Office to uh, applications like uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, they are running on Windows. So Windows is great, but uh, you can kind of take them to a the lot of the steps forward when you are working together with people to the different purposes. When you are using Word, for example, not a bad, not a bad, isn't that fun? So it's kind of bringing a kind of new level, next level, where it's kind of uses the platform capabilities in this time. It's about Teams, it's about SharePoint, it's about Microsoft 365, it's about Graph, it's all about all things in the Microsoft Cloud. It can bring together, and and you can kind of uh, start working uh, better with them. So uh, Viva is basically about culture and communications. Yeah, this maps to specific Viva products as well, but it's about uh, how we communicate with each other, how we are sharing information, how we are bringing that available to us, how we are creating a company culture. These are all really important things when you think about this COVID era or hybrid working era. This is not going away. We are going to be working more hybrid than we ever did. There's no coming back to 2019 or, or even pre, uh, before. The world changed permanently. I always thought that 2020 was a special year, but I didn't think it would be this way. Uh, <coughs> but it's all about uh, helping people to work better and trying to kind of find a new way where you can be better in health and mental health and, and how we stay up to date what's happening when we are uh, more, we are not disconnected, but we are kind of a working from different places. So we need that culture and communications. And of course, productivity and well-being. That being a very important part here. Uh, people are suffering from burnouts, etc. Because, yeah, they are getting exhausted because they are not ready <clears throat> to cope with this situation where you have to work from home. And, and you have to stay online with lots of other people. You need to utilize the knowledge and expertise 
to start people to work really work together and, and kind of uh, use that uh, use that knowledge so so it's not lost and, and you are just getting a head start there and of course skilling and growth and at the power app uh, I forgot to mention that if you have needs for power platform uh, in your organization let us help you we can train you and it's all about skilling and growing uh, there's going to be lots of possibilities to do a lot of skilling right inside from teams using the Viva Learning. But also, of course, we can help you to get started there. Like we train your people to start using these tools so they can create their own applications, their own automations. And you can take it forward even with skilling and growth. Uh, so basically, Viva Connections, some, some updates there. It's going to be the SharePoint application in Teams and uh, a few things forward. But it's starting to roll out soon, but the best news, it's included with SharePoint license. So you can start using that. You don't have to buy any extra licenses if your people can use SharePoint. So that's going to be there. The desktop client application is coming soon and the mobile client will follow in three to six months. But that's a kind of great piece of app because it's showing the full SharePoint side. So it allows lots of things there. It's coming. Our going to bring up some new web parts as well so it's going to be a very great experience for sharing information and always put these uh, apps like this to the best place is the top left corner there uh, viva insights and productivity <coughs> is the new home tab uh, which means the hope tab here uh, is basically it's it's missing from viva insights right now we have stay connected and protect time but we really want this one to appear there it's going to roll out um, during April, so next month. So you can have more information in there. And then if you have E5 licenses, you can also use, I don't know if it is a big thing or not, uh, you have a different philosophy on this, but basically you can schedule some email sending uh, afterwards, which is nice. I think at least it may be useful for some scenarios, but for some reason it's going to require E5 licenses. But anyway, the Viva Insights is coming in and it's going to start helping you out. So take a look and, and see, okay, how you can start using that. And then kind of, especially organizations think, okay, how we are going to tell about that and how we get people to start using that. So we are start, uh, getting better in, in the way we, we work. So we don't kind of exhaust ourselves. Viva Topics and Knowledge Expertise, uh, I showed this in the last spotlight already uh, in demos, so I'm not going to highlight these demos there. But basically what's coming up and what they showed is that uh, it's going to get these um, topic cards directly from inside Teams. So you uh, now we are seeing that on SharePoint pages, but then it's going to be inside Teams as well. And there's going to be Viva Topics application where we can dive in there more deeply. And there's going to be just questions and answers topic. And this was great. Like you can have people answering questions, but uh, when the AI picks it up, they can answer the questions. Probably won't be working in Finnish, but uh, in those some more uh, major languages, it's going to be fantastic. So people don't even have to answer, but AI can take care of the answer based on the previous answers. So that was kind of cool way showing how AI can inject thing into things. Uh, Viva learning and skilling and growth. This is important, of course. It's coming to public preview next month. And, uh, and there's going to be admins, uh, some control about what's going to be displayed there. But the beautiful thing, you can put the SharePoint there, you can put your own content there, and it's going to be in the M365 learning pathways will be integrated with uh, Viva Learning as well. So it's a kind of great way to bring the learning opportunities directly into Teams. And of course, there's, there's this uh, wonderful opportunity about uh, that this learning part will be integrated with Viva Topics too. So when you are in a topic, you might get some learning suggestions based on the topic. So that's kind of uh, cool ways how you can connect these things to work together. Okay, Microsoft Mesh. This, I, I really enjoy this. Uh, this is about the future. This is about the virtual reality. This is about something we could mm, we are going to be doing it together. Some people even refer to this as a Teams Next, uh, basically how we are going to do Teams meetings in the future. Not properly anyone, but uh, it's one more opportunity. 
how, how we are going to be more there uh, than we are now. Of course, when you are having that headset, either you might have a HoloLens or some uh, virtual reality headset, you can have those meetings without having to look at these displays, without having to look at these screens. And, and it can create those memories about the meetings, because that's when you start feeling that thing. I have used some virtual reality uh, on PlayStation before, and I'm, I have to, of course, done some testing, but I, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't have a HoloLens or anything like that at home. So, uh, but it's a totally different thing in there. Even with lousier graphics, it's very immersive. So, so it, it's going to be much more fun to have that kind of a innovative uh, meetings or, or sessions there. But there's also some work uh, business or business side there because uh, lots of companies, uh, big companies are either proof of concepting or kind of working or using the mixed reality already. Not everyone, but uh, many of them. And, and at the Ignite, check out the keynote how this is going to work there or shown how you can create or use Microsoft Mesh, which is a virtual reality platform that's uh, fully connected to the Microsoft Cloud as well and, and to uh, other places that you can kind of create your own experiences. So you can have a kind of very rich looking kind of avatar if you want, or you can go with the more kind of a crude avatars because it's all about uh, the kind of how much do you want to scale up? How, what's your reach? How, how many people are going to be attending or is it going to be very realistic? And it was great in the demo to that the, how they showed that the Outspace VR was connected to the Microsoft Mesh. So you can uh, have a very, very engaging meetings in the future if you want to, uh, if you put it that way. And I have one interesting slide I, I thought about, do I add it or not? But uh, why I wanted to add this slide is that it's showing up that Microsoft Mesh is using the Azure AD uh, kind of um, consents there. So you can grant access to specific Microsoft 365 resources for, uh, to your virtual reality applications. And now it brings a really interesting thing. When we are building a Power Platform application, for example, and and we, we could perhaps, uh, when we are creating things in the applications, we could be utilizing those things in a virtual reality as well. Because that mesh uh, solution or mesh application can start reading that documents, the information, people we work together, people we are meeting directly from Microsoft Cloud or from other sources. So you are really creating a very huge, uh, huge potential there when you are, when they enable that Microsoft graph is there, because it can kind of pull in from this all these resources we saw for Microsoft Viva, we saw things in Teams, we saw things in Power Platform. How about using that meeting connected Power uh, Platform to send messages, uh, Power App to send messages to the people who are uh, already in the virtual reality side of that meeting? or things like that, done with this platform. Of course, the, uh, the Mesh developer, developer platform is, is there, going to be there and to make the to, to make it more easier for us to create those business applications for you. It's not here yet. It's uh, 12 months for SDK avail availability, but the preview is there already and it, uh, they are opening up the preview, so it's going to go in phases. But it was really cool what they were showing with the immersive presence, how, how you are represented by very custom avatars. So you have this photorealistic holoportation, so you are there, or your objects are there, and how you can interact with the virtual and physical world in, in, in that sense. They had a great demo about the Pokemon uh, Go in, in, in this uh, Microsoft Mesh. So, so you can kind of connect that, do that mixed reality environment. And, and play together even when you are in different sides of the world. That was cool. So you have the spatial maps. You can land things on the specific uh, locations or specific objects. And, and you can have that holographic rendering there. So it's very sci-fi. And, and using the 
all these capabilities that's that's really cool i'm uh, i'm not know it's show if it shows or not but i'm re very excited about most mesh and as i said unfortunately i don't have a hololens too but if i had i would be testing that because it's already there for preview so how do you meet there and start using those uh, resources and if you want to create your mesh start learning unity it's all about uh, yeah uh, there's lots of things about Microsoft Mesh that are interesting, but everything what I already told today is about learning, also learning new things. And, and how do you have to keep continuously uh, learning how you are creating this, because this is, the, uh, this is the future. So some takeaways, I might actually end up in time. Uh, I had less demos this time, so I wasn't ca carried away too much. But basically some takeaways uh, for this year. Of course, Teams Connect coming back, coming back to the beginning. Basically, how do you work with shared channels, with your network, with your partners, with, um, with your uh, suppliers, making things easier for them. And if you think about frontline workers especially, it's going to make things a lot easier for them if, if they are from a different company and they don't have to tenant switch, because that's really, really difficult. Microsoft Teams webinars like this one, we are running a Teams meeting. We are doing this as a full webinar. And, and, and we, you can see my camera screen. You were able to use chat. You could use meeting reactions there if you're using Teams desktop and all that stuff. So basically start thinking about, OK, if you have a third party webinar solution, evaluate, is it really needed anymore? Do you need that marketing automation part if you take Dynamics 365 marketing on, on board? Of course, you're making changes in uh, very hasty, but evaluate things. You may save some uh, money in there. But especially learn how to use this because these are really easy to use and really easy to get started to use. Expanding and customizing teams with Power Platform. That's a really big theme. And I think Power Platform is going to be the key to take it further. At Ignite, it was very well nicely shown that, okay, there's a gap of developers or pro developers. We have business needs we need to realize as applications and solutions as processes, but there may not be enough developers available to do that. And so, and you have to kind of respond very agilely to changing situations. So that's why you, your business and your citizen devs need to ramp up some power platform skills. That's kind of the the way to expand and extend teams in the future. It's already there, but it's going to be even more important in the future. Virtual reality, the sci-fi part, it's back on the game. It was already kind of fading out, I think, but I think now it came back with a bam, with a big with boom, and, and we can start using that. And Max Viva, look into that especially, and, and it can be extended, so partners like us can really extend amongst to Viva and, and you can take things uh, a lot more further. Yes, there was graph already there, so you can connect to different data sources even outside of Microsoft 365. And for some of the Ignite news, check out the book of news. There's even more stuff than I had in this webinar. And as a reminder, if you are Skype for Business Online user, you are in a hurry. It's going to retire this summer. Hey everyone, thank you amazingly. I don't know how it's possible, but I might have kind of made it in time.